the word. The word. Hello, everyone. So we're Aminata uh, and Mohammed. Uh, aka DJ Shangozi from Black History Month Belgium and today we are here um, and in honor of the 60th anniversary of Congo's independence we uh, have some poetry for you and some music uh, as well as some other texts related to independence uh, specifically Congo's independence so to start, uh, I'm going to start with some poems from um, a Congolese poet, Chikaya Utamsi. And um, he is um, he's considered one of the most talented and original black French language poets to have emerged since Dama, Senghor and Césaire. Um, he's probably a bit lesser known than... Um, the previously named ones, uh, but he's certainly the most prolific, having produced six major books before the age of 40. Uh, he's born in 1929 at Mpili in the central Congo, uh, brought up in Pointe Noire on the Atlantic coast. Utamsi came to France at the age of 17 with his father, who was the first deputy from what later would become the Republic of Congo, Brazzaville. Since 1946, Utamsi has lived entirely in Europe, except for a brief and bitterly disillusioning return to Leopoldville in 1960 at the time of independence. So I'm going to read uh, a few of his poems translated um, in English. And um, the first poem I'm going to read is comes from his first uh, volume of poems called uh, Bad Blood. Uh, it was published in 1955 and is taken from uh, a major section of Rimbaud's um, A Season in Hell. Bad Blood. Tomorrow will be good. You believe me, don't you? Tomorrow we will have a brand new destiny at the end of a journey. Yes, yes, we'll march. And in your hands, so beautiful, proud, fateful, I shall put my joy. We'll sing, full of forgetting without past of what I've dreamed of. Your life, my life, life into its finished dream. Let us pour out our ciboriums and our one night flower. So that was bad blood. The next two poems come from work Brush Fire. Brush Fire. The fire, the river, that is to say, the sea to drink following the sand the feet, the hands, within the heart to love. This river that lives in me repeoples me. Only to you I said around the fire, my race, it flows here, and there a river. The flames are the looks of those who, breathe, who brood upon it. I said to you, my race, remembers the taste of bronze trunk hot. A mat to weave. He had just surrendered to the secret of the sun and wanted to write the poem of his life. Why the crystals in his blood? Why the globules in his laughter? His soul was ripe when someone shouted at him, Dirty nigger, since what's left him is the suave act of his laughter and a giant tree of a living wound that used to be this land he lives in wildly, behind the beasts, before behind the beasts. His river was the surest bowl, 
because it was of bronze, because it was his living flesh. It was then he told himself, no, my life is not a poem. Here's the tree, the river and the stones, beside this priesthood of what is to come. It is better to love wine and get up in the morning, they advised him but no more birds in the tenderness of mothers. Dirty nigger, he's the younger brother of fire. Here begins the jungle, and the sea no more now than the souvenir of seagulls standing upright beak to beak against the foam in some deadly dance. The tree was the leafiest, the bark of the tree the tenderest. The jungle burned what more to say? Why was there absent in the wine? Why put back in hearts and sea cows and canoers and the flowing of the river? The grain of sand between two teeth. It is thus the world is pulverized. No, no, his river was the gentlest vessel. The safest was his flesh the most alive. Here begins the poem of his life. He was dragged into a school. He was hauled into a workshop. And he saw the roads planted with sphinxes. He's left with a suave act of his laughter. Then the tree, then the water, then the leaves. This is why you'll see him. The canoers on foot have once more ceased their cries from the howlers of French cotton. This flight is a flying of doves. The leeches did not know the bitterness of this blood, the soundest of vessels. Dirty nigger, here is my Congolese head. It's the sanest of vessels. So those were uh, the first few poems from Chikaya Utemsi. Uh, I want to say a bit more about him. Um, so though the label uh, poet of negritude is one whose restrictions Chikaya Utemsi has sometimes objected to, Senghor feels he merits this title for having in his poems, quote, assumed the Negro's mingled despair and hope, particularly his suffering, his passion in the ethnological sense of the word, unquote. Senghor might have spoken of the black man's passion in the etymological sense of the word as well. For epitome is haunted not only by the martyrdom of Till, but by an implied comparison between the passion of Lumumba's Congo in the early 1960s and that of Christ, his betrayal and suffering from his capture in the Garden of Gethsemane. Until his death upon the cross, one finds in the very title and subtitle of Utamsi's poem, Epitome, headlined, to summarize a passion. Uh, so that's the poem uh, I'll be reading now. Um, so one, one finds in a poem a poet profoundly concerned with good and evil, guilt and responsibility, despair and love. Chikaya is perpetually self-questioning, exploring an inner world deeply identified with his homeland and its fates. Epitome and other of his poems must be understood as a kind of poetic examination of conscience, a confessional. In Epitome, the allusion to France, um, signaled by the blue, white, and red tricolor, suggests he might have been distrusted for being too French, or in any case, too long out of touch with his homeland. So 
With the approach of independence in 1960, Chikaya went back to Africa to edit a Leopoldville newspaper, Le Congo. He remained until his friend Patrice Lumumba, first president of the Congolese Republic, was arrested in a coup d'etat. The scandal referred to in Epitome directly concerns this abortive return to his native land. Chikaya had set out for Africa with the highest hopes, as if on a crusade, and his Epitome from 1962 and Le Ventre de Belly from 1965 are marked by this experience. So now I'm going to read six poems from Epitome, headline to summarize a passion. The Morning Paper, incident at Leopoldville, three cards on my table expressing regrets. I lend a deck of cards to someone passing by, more fertile in dialogues than the mute destiny of my perishable heart, which no longer resists the road to Damascus that hugs the bare belly of a shadowy hill to strip me at the epitome of my passion. O oh, my improbable genealogy, from what tree do I descend? What flowers did it wilt before the knell? Who told the knell? Told it like an orphan girl weeping in the night. A tree at the summit of a hill raises candle like a branch of blood, bearing in its hand a green leaf, softly seen against the yellow, fl the yellow light as a flame. The gins are hooting at it. There are trees I don't suspect. But where does such aborescent madness come from that I take fleas from the woods as the guides to my perdition? From what tree shall I descend? I give this improbable tree up as lost. Is night truly my morning time? I searched all the same pillaging the, fo the virgin forest, my hands like blinkers searching when a, ro when a rooster sneezed at the edge of a village, my voice at half-mast inclined its head. A sun rose in the sky. On earth, a mystic dog gave absolution to a woman, moundering his crazy hands above her bosom painted with two solid moons. Sleep takes night beneath the arm and stumbles across the plain. A dog barks as a passerby goes by, telling fortunes to any taker, among the hibernating. If they are asleep, my obediently negro brothers, who knows of what death I am amiably dying. The evening paper. There are dead and wounded. Retreat. In, or, in order to see my better world, amid this pus of things well done, I graft two orange blossoms to my retinas. Let them not be flame, let them be white to chill. The corpses in my sluggish conscience. The single toot of her mouth attacking my heart in order to justify my unconcern. He who is worthy of love is worthy of slow death, said a passerby. The sea drove the water's pride back to the white wheel, knitting a coat of white foam on the levitious waves in summer. The king jabbers, I rejoice, I am extensible like any honest heart. Viaticum. And eyes without hands that hold them face to face tear each other's hearts out, the country brandished by its hearts. You are from my country, 
I see it by the tick your soul has in the eyelids. And then you dance your sadness. You really are from my land. Go, time's on the lookout for us. If we're seduced by it, understand from this that the oil in your lamp is still, is still my blood brimming. If it spills, don't light your lamp. We need a dark corner in the land for our atavistic prayers. All from the umbilicus. But who knows how we got such tough heads. On a mat of field grass, three flies drunk on absinthe above the ancient destiny disturb my nostrils. Not to know between life and death what my life was and which way I am less nostalgic. You too are surely from my country. I can tell by your musty way of talking. You are baboons, go on, be humble, in order to learn it from me, who swallow flies at sunset. But do make the effort of human memory. Baboons, that's really it. You have a megaphone like mouth. Speak to the world. Tell them what we're like. We dance our sadness. What crime would I commit tonight if I desecrate the moon? In this waterhole that's offered me, they'll call it a poet's whim. Play me a lullaby with three horns and a hundred thousand cowbells, the reddish brown of certain recent household gods persists in me on certain evenings when the moths return. Sleep has a thousand degradations for the slanderous gin. When night sucks the earth and the Congolese clay, go take my head against what's left to me of night upon the soil. We were people of the night who had the destiny we had congenitally. Reeking of this indolence, I win by cheating. Let come a better cheat than I, pursuing me into this paradise where men with knives in hand endure most of their gangrene in their slumber. And that one, will he raise the fire they extinguish by pillaging the heart, whose scars elucidated mystery strips me, whips me, crucifies me at the epitome of my passion. Your eyes prophecy suffering, said a nightingale to an owl, at which the owl took fright. They put out a fire whose scars elucidated mystery exhaust the astral testura of my soul, which they require to be flesh. And the error persists. Two souls never made a couple. The passerby asked, what are two bodies doing with two souls facing the flames, facing the fires? I inhabited the soundless palace of oblivion. My heart in hand, wretched weather caused the building of a door. My body, a door with thresholds open to all. It was the threshold of the wind watched over by a woman who spoiled an agile dream at a fetish's expense. A thousand excrescences since have sprouted in my heart. An executioner haggles with my fetishes for them, in exchange for gold rewards. All my people live upon this commerce. I inhabited the soundless palace of oblivion. False suffixes on the roots of my tree, giving me a dirty ending. 
How could I rejoice at being born entirely of flesh, which is no coat of mail, any more than is this wind that wraps at each door, opens to each heart's beating blue sky, white sail, red blood? I who know nothing of the three of my life, my scandal was tricolored. The passerby said, Yes, yes, reason to live, reason to die. In this sense, it was I who was dreaming for a superhuman voice to count the contractions of a sea in labor on a worldly beach in order for others to compose the prelude of a tidal wave on the savannah. Then came these flowers in my letterbox from Kin. It's too convincing False suffixes on the roots of my tree give me a dirty ending. I no longer know the essence of my soul. All doors open on closed houses. My hands already shrivel like the wilted flowers. The silence on the part of my conscience is understood. I enjoy the king jabbering in French. I would speak if only I had memories. Go on, don't tell me who I was like yesterday. I console myself with being mortal here. Tomorrow, very soon, absence will come to my black brow. The image of a woman and I shall have her fingernails. And I, I forget to be Negro in order to forgive. No longer will I see my blood upon their hands, it's sworn. A vertebrate soliloquy. Once upon a time, it was already mine. A vertebrate soliloquy. Doesn't make Christianity delirious. Who is wrong for being crafty? The vertebrate, Christianity, or I? The farce continues to the next death. Let them burn my backbone. Enough of this scandal of my life. I'll no longer see my blood upon their hands. I forget to be Negro to forgive the world for this. I've said it. Let them, le let them leave me peacefully to be Congolese. These lines of my hand are harbinger signs. Set a knife before my sleep, so the web of ancient destiny may cut its thread. I want to be free of my destiny. I give the dew back to the grass. May the lines of my hand open all the ways to me of this long river.
Façade nord, même les nuages ici sont menaçants. Optimisme vigilant, utopie concrète. Les lois remplacent ici les amulettes. Larmes, sueur, sang. Le Saint Graal est minéral. Pandémie subtropicale, nommé un président par intérim. Ici de l'ancien régime. Au bureau des contentieux, on traite une affaire de fauteuil pour deux. Comme à Gao, après le déluge, la foi n'est pas une valeur refuge. deviennent carnivores aux abords des états-majors au ministère des impondérables pour instaurer une paix durable faut choisir entre la paix ou la justice ou la vengeance des petits-fils facteur exponentiel chercher le signe providentiel danseur cafarnaum pas le service minimum ode à la lutte la résilience le but, la black excellence These things were brought for the women In my soul To the victim, to the victim I cannot be forgotten Forever here poem I'm going to read um, from Chikaya Utamsi is called Fragile. Um, so these are a few experts, um, excerpts of the poem. I am no longer master of my tears, master of these graynesses of time. What flowers can I weave for Emmet Till? the child whose soul in mine lies bleeding. They killed him underwater. His mother caught her arms in fire, cooking him his midday meal. At first, the sun, miserable riot of eunuch schoolboys flying off in uproar at his childish eyes' first ecstasy. Then the strange... Martyrology, mother, I know. The memory of another's flesh burns more than the quick flame that caught your arms, neither for his midday nor his evening meal. He whom death dissects with boot kicks in the kidneys. The story was the child saluted her, a common woman in the crowd. That night, he walked along the bank to see the river pass. His greeting meant to compliment this wicked woman that he greeted. They killed him in the water, the way they baptize here, in a Christian manner, never in a mother's name. 
I die alone from pride. I leave to Emmett till his death from horror at myself. Who loves the sun enough to throw both soul and body in it? Here is the plain that I inhabit. My hand is white here on the door. Take my share of fruits. Though I do not know what tree it comes from, take my share of tears, even though I know what heart it saps. Don't be long. Already I am far from my beginnings. Don't be long. I can be useful. I've already done my nails, shaved my head. I am ready for the night. The next poem um, is called The Promenade. Here I am in Europe, without a cane in hand, walk where I limp along my people's way. You'll tell me in what Egypt my black people are moaning. My heart is not the desert. Speak, O oh Christ, speak. Is it you who put the living gold in my joyful wine? Do I owe my two beginnings to you, my heart and my soul? Is it you who gave my heart two such tiny ventricles? Tell me why I'd suffer from loving my road. A tree of dead life decked my oblivion with flowers. You remain immobile. The Congo is rent with pain. Oh, how dirty you are, Christ, from sticking with the middle class. Christ, the Christ of my Saint Anne. Say what wine I shall drink to lie to my people. My joy is too clairvoyant, my sadness too filthy to breathe brush fire. Dogs pursued me when I was a beggar. For the Eucharist I begged from the wine, the salt, the leaven. I was the wandering Jew. To betray you who had betrayed me. They've already killed me in your name. Betrayed me, then sold me. Night withered the roses that used to shed their leaves in grief. My own Mary Magdalene had Annie for a name. Less dirty than yours and therefore less absolvable. I'll, I'll die then without her. The bread of exile is unleavened and I am a Jew from pure madness. My folly is the well of an oasis. The oasis is not the wound in your left side. Christ, I spit on your joy. The sun is black with suffering Negroes, with dead Jews searching for the leaven for their bread. What do you know of New Bell? At Durban, 2,000 women. At Pretoria, 2,000. At Kin, as well, 2,000. And at Ansirabi, 2,000 more. What do you know of Harlem? The wine weighs on my heart and I hurt from rejoicing. Christ, I hate your Christians. I am empty of love to love all your cowards. I spit on your joy at having middle-class wives to right and left. I'm sick of having drunk too much. Your temple has, mer has merchants who sell your cross, Christ. I sell my negritude. Four lines for a dollar. And sail the galley toward the sold-out Indies. Ah, what continent hasn't its false Negroes? I've enough to sell. Even Africa has hers. The Congo has its false Negroes. If they were Christian, would they be any less liable to caution? 
Oh, I die for your glory, for you have tempted me by making me so sad. The next poem is called Sea Nocturne. The sea retreats as I advance, the sea advances, I retreat. Effusive mouth held trumpet shape, more French than Joan of Arc. Vipers mock my poisons. Eucalyptus makes me lewd. I know, I know, say nothing of it. My brain is clay, pressed into headlines that ball my headaches into bray. Head trampled on by boots, Boots knowingly studded with nails, boots cleverly injurious. My mind is clay. I know, I know, say nothing of it. All streams meander to the sea. I've seen my fronds through young love's eyes, and I tell myself again, all streams meander to the sea. So the last poem I'm going to read from Chikaya is called Communion 2, and it's from Bo Harp. When man becomes more faithful to man, woman more attentive to the moon, child docile to fond father's touch, my hands carbon copying a dawn, life will reinvent my body. My sudden silex memory will no longer mold the clay of crime on the back of any of my brothers. O light of the communion bread, O warmth of the wine in this chalice, all in the image of a blessed belly. My life no longer consumes me even now. Time was when it was sad to be a man. Every color of the body was a ghetto, one only left through the pores by sweating. Wherever I was, shadow whip cracked, even now my tongue clacks at a bland taste nettle has. Since I have learned to make balm from my voice. Ok, je vais être rapide, en totale obscurité. Je tenais à rappeler une seule chose. Je suis pas ton putain de négro de service. Oui, je suis le mec qui parle fort dans les transports. Je me laisse pas marcher dessus. Peut-être même que tu le mec qui parle fort dans les transports. Je me laisse pas marcher dessus. Peut-être même que quand tu me vois, tu te chies dessus. Parce que je suis le mec fort, imposant. J'ai le regard qui tue, qui fait même peur aux enfants. Mais ils n'ont pas peur de moi. Ils ont peur de l'idée qu'ils ont de moi à cause de vous. Ils m'enferment dans des cases. Je suis pas votre négro de service. Moi, je suis un homme délicat, doux, mais qui n'hésite pas à dire des putains de grossièretés. Donc si je te baise, je te baise. Je suis pas ton négro de service. Je vais pas, je veux pas me plier. J'ai pas envie de me plier au dire de la société. À ce qui paraît, j'ai une grosse queue. Je suis une bête de sexe. Allez vous faire foutre avec vos idées bêtes. Je suis et ne suis pas ce que tu penses. Non. À ce qui paraît, je m'habille bien. Ouais, ça c'est vrai. Je fais un effort de présentation. Ou oh, en couleur, veste, Weston, Dior, Dior. Hmm. On connaît la chanson. Mais j'ai juste envie de dire une chose. Et alors Et alors Si je veux, demain, je mets du noir. Je mets, je mets une casquette, un baggy, mes toutes dernières Yeezy. Je me pavane dans ma ville. Ouais, ma ville. Je suis chez moi ici. Et si tu penses le contraire, tu peux encore une fois aller te faire foutre. Je suis pas ton négro de service. Je m'affranchis, je pense et j'agis selon mes principes. Et là maintenant, c'est la violence. Ouais, la violence. Je suis plus là pour tendre la joue. À présent, c'est coup pour coup. Méfiez-vous parce que je ne suis pas seul. Et je ne parle pas de là-haut, mais de ceux, de nous ici-bas. 
à ce qui paraît pour vous, nous sommes des parias. Pourtant, nous sommes doctoresses, techniciens, avocats. Nous sommes bouchers, étudiants, avec ou sans enfants. Nous sommes horlogers, à l'heure ou en retard. Nous sommes endimanchés, en robe et en costard. Nous sommes policiers, politiciens. Certains pourris, mais on n'y peut rien. Nous sommes mamans, pères, sœurs ou frères. De sang ou par des liens solides. Nous sommes sororité, fraternité, dans des confréries ou des consoreries. Nous sommes multiples, mais différents et ensemble. Et je me répéterai qu'une seule fois, nous ne sommes pas vos putains de négros, de négros, de négros, de négros, de négros, de négros, de négros. So the next, um, I have three more things here that I that I'm going to read. Um, the first is uh, a proposed declaration of independence of the peoples of Africa, written by W. E. B. Du Bois uh, in April 1955. The peoples of Africa. Black and white, brown and yellow, have a right to freedom and self-government, to food and shelter, education and health. We hereby warn the world that no longer can Africa be regarded as pawn, slave or property of Europeans, Americans or any other people. Africa is for the Africans, its land and labor, its natural wealth and resources, its mountains, lakes and rivers, its cultures and its soul. Hereafter, it will no longer be ruled by might nor by power, by invading armies nor police, but by the spirit of all its gods and the wisdom of its prophets. Men of all races are welcome to Africa if they obey its laws, seek its interests and love their neighbors as themselves, doing unto others as they would that others should do to them. But the white bigots of South Africa and Kenya, the exploiters of the Rhodesias, the Congo, West, North and Southwest and Southeast Africa are solemnly warned that they cannot win. Their doom is sealed. We will be free. We will govern ourselves for our best good. Our wealth and labor belongs to us and not to the thieves at home nor abroad. Black Africa welcomes the world as equals. As masters, never. We will fight this forever and curse the blaspheming wars and the heat and liars from hell. Let a white world keep its missionaries at home to teach the golden rule to its corporate thieves. Damn the god of slavery, exploitation and war. Peace on earth, no more war. The earth of Africa is for its people. Its wealth is for the poor and not for the rich. All hail Africa. Oh, Mario. Lukata mwa si umoko bala. Mario musalo de bolinga ba mama mo bokoli. Basuka yote. Ah. Lelo makambo lobi makambo na lembie eh. Lelo bit 
The next poem um, I'm going to read, uh, the last poem um, of today, um, is from uh, Patrice Lumumba. Um, and this poem was published in his party newspaper, Independence, in September 1959. It's called Weep, O Beloved Black Brother. O Black, a human beast of the fields for centuries, your ashes are scattered to all the winds of heaven. And you once built funeral temples where the executioners sleep in eternal slumber, persecuted and hunted down, driven from your villages, conquered in battles where the law of the most powerful in those barbarous centuries of rape and carnage meant slavery or death for you. You took refuge in those deep forests where the other death lay in wait beneath its feverish mask, beneath the fang of the great cat, or in the foul and cold embrace of the serpent slowly crushing you. And then the white came, more cunning, more crafty, more rapacious, giving you trinkets in exchange for your gold raping your woman, besotting your warriors with drink, driving your sons and daughters aboard his boats. The tom-tom throbbed from village to village, bearing your grief afar, sowing confusion, telling of the great departure for distant shores, where cotton is God and the dollar king condemning you to forced labor like a beast of burden from, da from dawn to dusk beneath a fiery sun to make you forget that you were a man. They taught you to sing God's praises and all these hymns setting your Calvary to rhythm made you hope for a better world. But in your heart as a human being All you asked for was your right to live and your share of happiness. Sitting around a fire, your eyes full of dreams and anguish, singing songs that told of your heavy heart, joyous at times too, when the sap mounted, you danced wildly in the damp of evening. And that is when jazz was born, as magnificent, sensual and manly as a voice of brass. A powerful music poured forth from your pain, a music admired today throughout the world, forcing the white man to be respectful, telling him in a loud voice that henceforth this country is no longer his as in the old days. You thus allowed the brothers of your race to lift their heads and look upon the happy future that promises deliverance. The shores of the great river full of promises henceforth belong to you. This earth and all its riches henceforth belong to you and the fiery sun, high in a colorless sky, will burn away your pain. Its searing rays will forever dry the tears your, your forefathers shed, tormented by their tyrannical masters, on this soil that you still cherish. And you will make the Congo a free and happy nation in the heart of this giant black Africa.
So um, to end, um, I'm going to read um, the speech that Lumumba gave at the ceremony of the proclamation of the Congo's independence on June 30th, 1960. So exactly 60 years ago today. Men and women of the Congo, victorious independence fighters, I salute you in the name of the Congolese government. I ask all of you, my friends, who tirelessly fought in our ranks to mark this June 30, 1960 as an illustrious date that will be ever engraved in your hearts. A date whose meaning you will proudly explain to your children, so that they in turn might relate to their grandchildren and great-grandchildren the glorious history of our struggle for freedom. Although this independence of the Congo is being proclaimed today by agreement with Belgium, an amicable country with which we are on equal terms, no Congolese will ever forget that independence was won in struggle, a persevering and inspired struggle, carried on from day to day, a struggle in which we were undaunted by privation or suffering and stinted neither strength nor blood. It was filled with tears, fire and blood, we are deeply proud of our struggle because it was just and noble and indispensable in putting an end to the humiliating bondage that forced upon us. That was our lot for the 80 years of colonial rule and our wounds are too fresh and much too painful to be forgotten. We have experienced forced labor in exchange for pay that did not allow us to satisfy our hunger, to clothe ourselves, to have decent lodgings, or to bring up our children as dearly loved ones. Morning, noon, and night, we were subjected to jeers, insults, and blows because we were quote-unquote, Negroes. Who will ever forget that the black was addressed as tu, not because he was a friend, but because the polite vous was reserved for the white man. We have seen our land seized in the name of ostensibly just laws, which gave recognition only to the right of might. We have not forgotten that the law was never the same for the white and the black, that it was lenient to the ones and cruel and inhumane to the others. We have experienced atrocious sufferings, being persecuted for political convictions and religious beliefs, and exiled from our native land. Our lot was worse than death itself. We have not forgotten that in the cities the mansions were built for the whites and the tumble-down huts for the blacks. That a black was not admitted to the cinemas, restaurants and shops set aside for quote-unquote Europeans. That a black traveled, traveled in the holds under the feet of the whites in their luxury cabins. Who will ever forget the shootings which killed so many of our brothers, or the cells into which were mercilessly thrown those who no longer wished to submit to the regime of injustice, oppression, and exploitation used by the colonialists as a tool of their domination? All that, my brothers, brought us untold suffering. But we, who were elected by the votes of your representatives, representatives of the people, to guide our native land, 
We who have suffered in body and soul from the colonial oppression, we tell you that henceforth all that is finished with. The Republic of the Congo has been proclaimed and our beloved country's future is now in the hands of its own people. Brothers, let us commence together a new struggle, a sublime struggle that will lead our country to peace, prosperity and greatness. Together we shall establish social justice and ensure for every man a fair remuneration for his labor. We shall show the world what a black man can do when working in liberty. And we shall make the Congo the pride of Africa. We shall see to it that the lands of our native country truly belongs and benefits its children. We shall revise all the old laws and make them into new ones that will be just and noble. We shall stop the persecution of free thought. We shall see to it that all citizens enjoy to the fullest extent the basic freedoms provided for by the Declaration of Human Rights. We shall eradicate all discrimination, whatever its origin, and we shall ensure for everyone a station in life befitting his human dignity and worthy of his labor and his loyalty to the country. We shall institute in the country a peace resting not on guns and bayonets, but on concord and goodwill. And in all this, my dear compatriots, we can rely not only on our own enormous forces and immense wealth, but also on the assistance of the numerous foreign states whose cooperation we shall accept when it is not aimed at imposing upon us an alien policy, but is given in a spirit of friendship. Even Belgium, which has finally learned the lesson of history and need no longer try to oppose our independence, is prepared to give us its aid and friendship. For that end, an agreement has just been signed between our two equal and independent countries. I am sure that this cooperation will benefit both countries. For our part, we shall, while remaining vigilant, try to observe the engagements we have freely made. Thus, both in the internal and external spheres, the new Congo being created by my government will be rich, free, and prosperous. But to attain our goal without delay, I ask all of you, legislators and citizens of the Congo, to give us all the help you can. I ask you all to sink your tribal quarrels. They weaken us and may cause us to be despised abroad. I ask you all not to shrink from any sacrifice for the sake of ensuring the success of our grand undertaking. Finally, I ask you unconditionally to respect the life and property of fellow citizens and foreigners who have settled in our country. If the conduct of these foreigners leaves much to be desired, our justice will promptly expel them from the territory of the Republic. If, on the contrary, their conduct is good, they must be left in peace for they too are working for our country's prosperity. The Congo's independence is a decisive step towards the liberation of the whole African continent. Our government, a government of national and popular unity, will serve its country. I call on all Congolese citizens, men, women and children, to set themselves resolutely to the task of creating a national economy and ensuring our economic independence. 
Eternal glory to the fighters for national liberation. Long live independence and African unity. Long live the independent and sovereign Congo. Independence, cha cha, tozumiye. Oki kwanza, cha cha, tu bakidi. Oka bero, cha cha, bagalieo. Oni pata, cha cha, tozumiye. Independence, cha cha, tozumiye. Oki kwanza. Cette chanson fédératrice 
symbole de la crédulité des prémices, entre indépendance et armistice. Mais pour que nos démocraties progressent, pour qu'elles apprennent de leur... Excellence ZK, la fondation des NT plus forte. 